In this video, we're going to be looking at end-to-end -end testing with Virtuoso. Well, this really refers to more testing an entire workflow, more looking from the end user's perspective, <clears throat> whether that's uh, an end user placing an order in an e-commerce store, or it could be an administrator, let's say working in an order management system. It just means rather than testing individual features, test end-to-end, -end, which could include multiple applications with integrations in the same test. So let's get started and create a new goal, which will be on our rocketshop.virtuoso.qa. And let's call this our end-to-end -end goal. And then by clicking on create an ad first journey, we create our journey. So now let's go ahead and create our first checkpoint, which will be our purchasing uh, checkpoint. And for that, we're gonna go through and simply add in, we're gonna go and let's wait for the rocket shop. Let us then look for the comment integration. We can then click add to bag, click on the shopping bag to add it into the bag. We can then wait for the go to checkout because that's unique on the next page and just leaves time, either a dynamic wait, either 20 seconds will go to wait as the page changes. And then we will click on go to checkout. So that's the first portion, which is going basically to the checkout. Then we're gonna come in and we'll actually go through the checkout where we can write james.b at virtuoso.qa in the email. Now what I'm gonna do now is because I've written that into the form here, now I'm gonna to wanna to use that email address that I've written here that I'm gonna create my, my order against. I wanna be able to save that in a parameter because what I'm gonna do is jump into another system and then reuse that detail. So I could come in, hover over and then store the element text, which is the email address. And by doing that, we can see that we have stored james.b at virtuoso.qa. So we're basically storing details that have been inputted. Okay, and then I can just come in and fill some more details. So let's write James in full name. Let's write phone number in the phone numbers field. Let's write the street address in address. And then let's write 90210 in the zip code and then finally we just want to put the credit card details in and when i write these in these are just test details so don't try and use this at home because it won't work but it means i can just enter in a test credit card number and put that into the card number field and then also let's write the csv again a test csv into the xxx box so I filled in all the details and now I can click confirm and pay. And then we see that we get the purchase confirmation. And so here, let's say this had an order number in it. I could now come and store that. So I could say, maybe let's say this was my order number. I could say, this is my order ID and I'm gonna store that into a parameter. So what I've done, I've just gone through one uh, journey basically or one test in this in this single application So now what I could do if I could come to my API's I might want to have an API call that I am testing and let's call this let's uh, Say we're gonna make uh, the post user for example Now what I want to do in here I want to map my order ID which will come from order ID for example and then I could map that into my body so I could say that my perhaps my order ID which is part of the payload I'm gonna map that in from my order ID, which will be coming in as part of the test. And then when I click on send, basically I'll be able to pass that parameter. Now, if I click on save, then what I can do is when I am making my call, so if I come into my end-to-end -end journey, or my end-to-end -end goal rather here. So as I said, I've written the first part and I've returned an order ID then what I could do now is I could test making an API call. So this could be to pass the order ID through an orders API, for example. And so what I can just do it in the same journey, 
I can now make an API call. So let's pick our post user. We don't need to map any additional inputs because I've done that at the API header and we could return the response. So now what we see is I've now got my order ID, which will be taking from the order ID that I stored. And when that's made, we can see that we passed in the order ID, which in this case it was order review, but you know, imagine that's our order ID that we're passing. So I've used data from the test that was generated, stored it, and now I've passed it into an API call where I could then be asserting that let's say the response dot data dot let's say ID uh, is greater than one, for example. Or I could be asserting that the uh, response dot status equals 201. So I can be making an API call past the data and then check the responses that come back, which is in context of the journey of the purchasing. But then next we could go into uh, a second application as part of the flow. So let's say now the user has to go and once they've gone to a store, they have to go and fill in a contact form. Maybe they're signing up for a newsletter to get a discount. So in the same test, we could go to navigate to, and in this case, we're just gonna use the Virtuoso website. Equally, you might be going into Salesforce, SAP, an order management system. I can now do that in a new tab. So when I open that, it's going to open a new tab. So I still have my order confirmation open, but in another tab I can come across. I'm going to just put in a wait for this element for the page to load. I'm going to then click on accept cookies. And then what I want to be able to interact with at the bottom here, they've got to fill in a form, let's say, which is contact us. So I could say click. Now this is on the bottom of the page, so I don't know I need to do this, but I'm going to say click uh, bottom uh, contact us. Just to put a positional command on there to tell it where on the page it is. And we can check that that did click on the bottom contact us. And I just did that because I didn't know whether contact us may actually appear in the headers as well of the page. So we can see in this case, it clicked on the contact us at the bottom of the page. Otherwise it may have been in one of these menus at the top. So it was just good to put that in. And then we can come and we can wait for the, there we go, wait for that particular message because it's unique to this page. Now what I wanna do, I want to come in and say, well, I want to input the same email address that I used when I was filling out the form in the checkout. Maybe I've got multiple emails. Which one did I use? I want to make sure I sign up with the same one. So we stored that in email address. So now what I could do is say, write email address in company email, for example. And what this means is that even though I'm going into another application, and we can see here that actually failed and if we click on that, which is good, let's see, we can fix the step, click into company email, and there we go, we find out the reason is because it's an iframe. So that's a good example of live debugging. But also how now we've persisted data across the two different applications. That was the one I used to place my order with and I signed up in the e-commerce store. So when I'm filling out this contact form, again, I could be signing up for something, but it equally could be I could be taking the order ID, going into an order management system and pulling that up to go and process it. It just shows how now we can fill out those details based on data persisted across so we get that consistency rather than testing in isolation and you're not really looking at those records being managed across the systems. And then of course we could come back in and we could say uh, check final state in e-commerce store. And so let's say we've gone and order, managed an order here through to a certain stage, and we now want to switch to tab zero, which takes us back to the rocket shop. There we go, we see the blue dot up here. And then as the final step, uh, the user may just have to go down and maybe they've received the confirmation after it's been, the order's been processed. So they can click download confirmation in this case, and they finalize the process. Um, to be able to complete their ordering. So we've gone through multiple features and scenarios. So in a single journey, we've purchased, we've gone to a checkout, we've passed an order via an API, asserted on the responses, moved into a second application, which uses persisted data to be able to fill out a form before jumping back to the initial application, which was still open in another tab to be able to complete a workflow. It's an example of how you can do end-to-end -end testing 
though of course with the different workflows and applications then the scenarios would change but it's a good indication of how this works.